Good morning, Year 3. Welcome to Day 4 of your Focus on Calculation. Here are the answers to yesterday's problems. Again, if you had any difficulties with those, just pop onto the maths blog. So get your timer ready for five minutes and here is today's Fluent in Five. Pause the video. And the answers to today's Fluent in Five. So today's focus, we're going to be looking at multiplication and division facts. Now, you should be able to use your times table knowledge to fill in this grid. And the way that you do that is you look along this column here. So the one times one. In this box, you'll write the answer to that. Two times one. We'll go in this box. If I was going to do four times four, I go to the four here, along from the four here, and the answer would be 16 in here. So I'll show you, if you have a go at that, pause the video, and then I'll show you what that should look like. It does seem complicated, but once you start to fill it in, just following the rows where they meet, 1 times 3 or 3 times 1, 4 times 2 is 8. Hopefully you'll work that out because there is a task later on that involves um, using a times table square. Now we're going to look at some number sentences involving multiplication and division this time. But again, we're going to think about inverse. Now, if you remember from the other day, inverse means opposite. So we know that multiplication um, is the inverse of division, the opposite of division. And division is the inverse of multiplication. And we can see the relationship between the numbers in the number sentences. So if we have three groups of eight, the answer is 24. If I take that um, lot of 24 and I then split it up into three groups again, I know that I'll have eight in each because all of the um, numbers are related. And again, when we're multiplying, we're making the number bigger. We're increasing it. So the biggest part of the uh, number sentence is the answer. When we are dividing, we are splitting it, we are making it smaller, so we start off with the bigger number. And again, that's a really good way of checking that you have got the right answer, that you've carried out the operation correctly by just having a quick visual check where is the biggest number in this number sentence and what operation am I carrying So here I have a word problem, much like we did yesterday. Um, I am thinking of a number. I multiply my number by five. My new number is 30. What was my starting number? Have a go at that if you want to. Um, pause the video. However, I'm going to go through it on the next slide. So if you want to carry on, that's fine. So I am thinking of a number. So I have drawn a bar model. Um, here is the number I am thinking of and I have multiplied it by five. So I have made five lots of my mystery number. And I know that my number, once I've done that, is 30. So looking at this bar model, we can also see that we have got 30 divided into five groups. So what times five equals 30? We therefore can change that round using the inverse, looking at the bar model and understanding that we can divide 30 into five groups and that will tell us what our mystery number is. And I know my five times table, 30 divided by five equals six. We've used the inverse, we've started off with a multiplication problem and we've used the inverse division to help us find the answer. And we can do a quick check. 30 divided by five is six. Five multiplied by six is 30. So for today's task, I've given you a couple of times table squares. I've done one that goes up to 10 times 10 and I've also gone up to 12 times 12. Now I know that we haven't completed all of these times tables in times tables rock stars as yet, but just complete as much as you can. Um, so if you know the five times table, you would write all of the answers in this column, five times one, five times two, five times three. You can also then write it across this way, five times one, five times two. And you'll see very quickly 
that the table does actually start to fill up if you work on one times table at a time. Have a go, do your best. I'm not expecting everyone to be able to complete it, but just fill it up as much as you can. And then we've got some more um, number sentences for you to write the inverse for, some to work out the missing numbers, and then a few word problems. And I'll give you the answers to all of this tomorrow.